You've identified that you're gonna buy some kind of Concept2 machine, most likely because your friends were telling you, you read in a magazine article somewhere, hey, rowing's this really great new thing. Everybody should be doing it. It is perhaps the best thing I've seen in the last six months. Look at all the things that are popping up that allow you to do rowing. But then you go down the rabbit hole, and all of a sudden you see the skier, the biker, the rower, and now you're stuck. Hey. <laughs> Which one do I buy? I can only afford one. Help, please. I've spent most of my career using the rowing machine, but back in my CrossFit days when I was competing, I spent a very healthy amount of time getting my butt kicked by all of these machines. And in fact, A, I have all of them in the garage here, but B, I've also done a workout that included all three. Actually, check out that video. We're gonna link it here. I did a triathlon with all three machines. So I've got my butt whooped by all of them. If this is your first time here, welcome to Dark Horse, where we build better humans through rowing. Ultimately, the decision's gonna come up to you based off of all of your factors for validating which piece of equipment. In today's video, I'm going to break down the values of each of these machines, why they do what they do, what they do, how they do it, and why you may make a decision on one over the other, just helping to give you the decision-making power so that you can ultimately make the right one for you. But I do understand that all of you are gonna have different decision-making variables, so that part is pretty personal. And at the end, I'm gonna give you my personal favorite of the three. First up, the rower. The tried, the true, the machine we all know. As we stand now, the Model D is kind of Concept 2's latest rowing machine. It has gone through four major iterations, the A, the B, the C, and the D. There's also the E, but it's basically the D, just taller, heavier, and more cumbersome. Anyways, what we're looking at now is the Model D rower. It was the first machine, other than oars, that was where Concept 2 started, but it was the first machine they made, which means that it's been through the most iterations, the most testing, and really why it's such an indestructible machine and why it really got its start is because it's made out of very simple parts. The Dreisgacker brothers built this thing to just be indestructible. Their engineers, they, they engineered it out of bicycle parts essentially to begin with. So on this machine, you can rest assured that you're getting something that will stand the test of time. I don't need to expand on why rowing is a great thing, but what you're looking at when you talk about rowing is A, it's lower extremity dominant, it's primarily a leg push, B, it's posterior chain dominant, which means that your backside, from your hamstrings, your glutes, your back, your scaps, all of that are working together to create the movement and you're also working core to extremity. So meaning from the midline, everything radiates out and you're creating this chain of a movement and it's about as full body as one can get. So that would be the value behind choosing rowing over the ski erg or the bike erg. That would be primarily your reason for that as well as choosing the machine that's been around the longest and has the longest track record of movement, education, workouts, all of that. The, the depth around this machine is essentially better than the other two simply because it's been around longer. Now the other things to consider with this would be perhaps the size requirements. This machine falls at about 93 inches from wheelbase to wheelbase, the front to the back. So it's also important to know that, that you can break it into two pieces for storage. So it can possibly fit into a tighter space than you may be able to get with a skier, for example, that does not break down. It only has its standing height requirement. Whereas this can essentially become smaller so that you could perhaps store it in a closet and find an easier way of keeping the machine around. Another note, and just this falls across all the platforms, you're getting the PM5 monitor on each of the machines if you were to buy them today. It's just reworded for the ski erg or the bike erg. And so that's an important note to make as well. The data screen that you're going to get will be the same across all machines. All right, that covers the rower. That's the first and oldest machine, but next up, would be our second oldest machine. This was a, not a late comer, it's been around for quite a while in many iterations. In fact, the first one just took the rower and put it upright against a wall. The ski erg, this guy right here. Come on, let's go look. Okay, so I mentioned that this thing's tall and cumbersome on space because we can't break it down. So the rower, yes, it's taller, but you can break it into two parts for a little bit easier storage. With this machine, I told you we'd measure it. Let's see how tall it actually is. We're at 
essentially seven feet. So this thing is seven feet tall. And then I'll measure the pad for you. The pad is four feet, seven feet by four feet. If you go with this rolling stand, you need that because you don't want to attach it to your wall. Now, maybe it's a beautiful piece of art. Maybe you have a beautiful Danish modern home with white walls and leather furniture, rugs on the ground, and you want that simple black statement piece square on your wall. This could be that. However, if you have a cluttered home like I do, and I'm sure all of us do, especially I have kids, Lord knows I have toys and whatnot everywhere. I'm not about to put this on the wall in my house, maybe in my garage, but I like the flexibility of having the rolling floor stand because it just makes my life a little bit easier. So I just have to accept that I've got a seven by four foot footprint that is going to always be here. That's an important note and just something to be thinking about. Now, another similarity about these machines is they all share the same flywheel. So you're going to get essentially the same noise factor out of each machine, whether you think that it's loud or quiet, that's your decision. But the point being, each of these flywheels is the same as what you will find on every other machine. All machines are equal on the flywheel. Now, the thing you will see, for example, on the ski erg is that there's a plastic sheet over part of the flywheel. Now that plastic sheet is there to change or restrict airflow. Because we're using ex upper extremity, which is not nearly as strong as lower extremity, you're going to find that they lighten the drag factor by putting that plastic plate on there. If you were to take that off, it would get very heavy, very fast, which puts a lot of load and demand on your shoulders. Things that you need to take into consideration. Obviously, I don't advise taking that plastic sheet off. It's there for a reason. And then understand that, again, upper extremity dominant, anterior chain dominant, and still core to extremity as with the rower. All right, that covers the ski erg. That would be option number two that you could buy of the Concept 2 lineup. About the same price point on these things. We're not seeing these massive price jumps. So if you're saving for one of these machines, odds are you're gonna be spending about the same amount of money. So it's not really a money decision here. I would say it's more of a, what you're trying to accomplish. But next, let's get to the newest, the latest, the greatest. Maybe not the greatest. That one's up for decision. The new kid on the block, the biker. What you've got with the biker is essentially the same components as with every other machine that Concept2 has made. The difference, you're on a bike, instead of skiing, or rowing. It doesn't do anything different than any other bike would, whether you took a standard road bike and put it on rollers, or if you bought another spin bike. What is different though, is that patented Concept2 flywheel feel. And that's often what people love, is the flywheel feel, because it's almost unforgiving, but dependable. It's reliable and torturous. You get the flywheel, you get the PM5, in a bike format that's adjustable. You can swap out the handlebars, you can move the handlebars forward and back, up and down, the seat can go up and down, and you can replace the saddle, you can replace the pedals to whatever you want. So this is very, very customizable, unlike the other two machines where you don't have an opportunity to really customize it the way you want. With this, you can change out all of the pieces. In fact, I've already swapped the pedals for clipless on mine here. And what you get is with a PM5, you can now connect to apps like Zwift. And if you have some kind of like indoor cycling app, it will most likely connect to this monitor. You are getting an indoor spin or cycling experience, but on a Concept2 machine, which is often going to put your price point lower than something like a Peloton. And you can even work on the Peloton app with this machine if you wanted to. I don't know about actual direct connection, but I do know that you could follow along on the Peloton app. There's really nothing fancy here. The cycling movement is going to be very quad dominant. If you were to switch, switch to clipless pedals, then you can get some hamstring activation because you're pulling up on the pedals at the same time. But other than that, you're not getting much midline work. You're not getting a lot of back strengthening. Not much happens from the waist up. It's all happening from the waist down, which is going to prioritize just that system, that leg drive down. What I like about the rower and what I like about the skier is it contains a full body element, which is missing when it comes to a bike. Each of these machines offers its very own benefit from cycling where you get very quad dominant and really a lot of power production out of the legs to rowing where it's a full body, still lower extremity dominant, but a little bit more posterior chain activation or the skier where you're getting anterior chain and upper extremity dominant work. All of them are great machines. It just depends what's the biggest value to you and making sure that as you choose it, you are picking out the thing that you value most and that you're gonna get the most use out of because at the end of the day, that's what matters most. So what's my favorite machine? 
I know you want me to say the rower. And yes, I love the rower because there's so much value to it. However, for my own personal edification, what I really love right now, it's the biker. I like that I can sit on the machine and get some good spin out of it that's a little bit more mindless because I've spent so much time over my life on the rower, on the skier. I'm enjoying the bike for the time being because it's new and it's fun. And like I said, it's the new kid on the block. So I'm having some fun with it. That's my personal favorite at this moment in time. And after you've picked the machine that makes the absolute most sense to you, make sure that you go to our website to check out our workout programs in which we have programs that help you on every single one of these machines and click that subscribe button so that you can become a dark horse and join our community and make yourself a better human. If you want more, check out our latest video. If you want workouts, check out this workout playlist. I love you all. Go do great things. I'll see you on the other side.